In this video, I compare six different condenser mics ranging from $125 to $299, so you can find the one that's the best fit for you. Some of these are XLR microphones geared more towards professional studio use, while others are USB-based and designed for content creators. There's something unique about every mic in this lineup, and I can't cover everything, but I will share what they all come with, as well as any notable pros and cons. At the end, I'll have sample audio using both male and female voices, so you can compare these mics without any brand bias. I also previously did a part one dynamic mic comparison video, if you want to check that one out after this. With all of that said, let's start with a pair of mics from Lewitt in the LCT-240 Pro and LCT 440 Pure. These mics are almost indistinguishable apart from the model name on them as well as the capsule size within the microphone. The capsule in the 240 Pro is two thirds of an inch and the capsule in the 440 Pure is one inch. Both of these mics have a really nice glossy finish and both come in black, but the 240 Pro also comes in a white variant. The 240 Pro comes with the mic, a zipper case, a pop filter, and a mic mount and the 440 Pure includes all of that, plus a shock mount and an additional rigid magnetic pop filter. The 240 Pro and 440 Pure are $139 and $289 respectively, so they're on the far ends of the spectrum as far as mics in this video go. Next up are a couple of options from the legendary Sennheiser. First is the MK4, which is a pretty basic but really well-built mic. It's got an extremely solid black and silver build, and it has more of a matte or satin finish and also has more texture to it so it feels better when you're handling it. It comes with the mic, a storage pouch, and a mount with an integrated threaded piece to attach to the mic. The MK4 is around $299 so it is the most expensive mic in this video but most expensive doesn't always mean the best, so we'll have to see if it sounds better compared to the other mics later on. The second Sennheiser option is their brand new Profile USB mic, which is geared more towards streamers, podcasters, and other content creators. It's very different in that it has three knobs, one button, a USB port, and a headphone jack versus the single XLR port on the MK4. The knobs let you control the microphone gain, the headphone volume, and the balance between the direct monitoring in the headphone versus system audio. It also has a quick mute button right above those knobs. Since it's USB based, you don't need any kind of external audio interface to use it, and that makes it one of the most portable options out there. You can get this mic in a simple desktop set for $129, or in a streaming set with a boom arm for $199, and both kits include USB-C cables. Next up is another USB mic, this time from Rode in the XCM50, which goes for $149. Disregarding the mic itself, this one easily wins the sexiest packaging award. Inside the box is the mic, a mini tripod slash desktop stand, a USB cable, and a headphone extension cable, which is really nice if you want to put this mic on a boom arm. This mic has a headphone monitoring jack, as well as a multifunction pressable knob for headphone volume, monitoring balance, and quick mute functionality. The XCM50 does not have a hardware knob dedicated to the microphone gain. Instead, you have to adjust the mic's gain within Rode software, which sounds kind of annoying. I found that you only have to do this once, as long as the same person's going to be using the same mic every time, so it's really not that big of a deal. And the Rode Unify software is really awesome because it's almost like having a Rodecaster Pro 2 in software form. Among other things, you can mix together multiple mics with other audio sources, as well as applying effects like equalization and compression. All of that is really helpful for getting the best sounding audio for live formats like streaming and podcasting, and all of that processing is done on a chip within the mic itself so it doesn't put any more strain on your computer. The last mic in this lineup is the least expensive, but perhaps the most full featured, the Boya BYM1000. All of the other mics in this video have a set cardioid pickup pattern, but this is a multi pickup pattern mic. So that means you can switch between omnidirectional, which picks up sound equally in 360 degrees around the mic, figure eight, which picks up sound in front of and behind the mic while rejecting sounds from the sides, or the standard cardioid pickup pattern, which picks up sound directly in front of the mic. If you're trying to record something like a conversation between two or more people, it's really nice to be able to switch that pickup pattern for the best audio quality. It also has a built-in low cut filter and a negative 10 decibel pad if you're recording something abnormally loud. The BYM1000 includes a shock mount, pop filter, XLR cable, 
spare shock mount replacement parts, and silicone rings that go on the ends of XLR cables to give them a tighter fit if necessary. For being only $125, this mic does a lot of things and comes with a lot of stuff but we'll have to see how it sounds in comparison to the others. Now that I've introduced all of the mics, I'm gonna play back some audio samples in no particular order. The only processing done is very minimal normalization, so they're all relatively at the same loudness. With so many different options out there, these samples will help you choose the best condenser mic possible. With so many different options out there, these samples will help you choose the best condenser mic possible. With so many different options out there, these samples should help you choose the best condenser mic possible. With so many different options out there, these samples will help you choose the best condenser mic possible. With so many different options out there, these samples will help you choose the best condenser mic possible. With so many different options out there, these samples will help you choose the best condenser mic possible. Since every mic sounds different with different types of voices, here are some more samples using a female voice. Choosing the right condenser microphone depends not only on its features, but the type of voice or sound you'll be recording as well. Choosing the right condenser microphone depends not only on its features, but the type of voice or sound you'll be recording as well. Choosing the right condenser microphone depends not only on its features, but the type of voice or sound you'll be recording as well. Choosing the right condenser microphone depends not only on its features, but the type of voice or sound you'll be recording as well. Choosing the right condenser microphone depends not only on its features, but the type of voice or sound you'll be recording as well. Choosing the right condenser microphone depends not only on its features, but the type of voice or sound you'll be recording as well. Before I reveal which sample was which mic, pause the video and leave a comment telling me which ones were your favorites and least favorites, and we'll come back to those in a minute. A was the Rode XCM50, B was the Lewitt LCT440 Pure, C was the Sennheiser Profile, D was the Boya BYM1000, E was the Lewitt LCT240 Pro, and F was the Sennheiser MK4. Now that you know which mic is which, edit your comment and let me know if any of these surprised you. Also, if there's any other condenser mics out there that you're curious about, let me know and I'll try to include them in part two. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.